some words on the technical aspects of the LRP S10 blast short course truck which is basically very much the same as the, the truck they have as well as the buggy and the touring car etc etc same plastic thing probably the same problems although most you won't have an issue with if you have the smaller versions like the touring car you can run bigger pinions and you have less issues so I've had not, not, not very good luck with this truck yet um, only ran two packs and ran into a heap of trouble this is my second drive shaft why? because of the focus please the pin on the end which it won't focus on riddance uh, it came out unfortunately so it was a rear wheel drive only effort from that point on the pin didn't actually break but because the drive shaft is aluminum and the pin is steel hardened steel maybe I don't know came undone so new drive shafts on and new attempt further and I'm gonna fix this permanently uh, with something really simple but it does have a few other Issues. This is the rear drivetrain. But you can see it now. It's focusing. Glad it is. This is the rear drivetrain. What you're looking at is the slipper clutch. And the slipper clutch has a huge gouge on it. I didn't run with the rock guard on because the rock guard didn't fit with the new motor I had. Um, a rock got wedged made a huge dent that meant that the gr grub screw for the drive shaft assembly came loose and it did it on the rear as well as in the front wait well, you can get there to it from above by slowly twisting it until you get into a position that you can stick your uh, your hex driver in between the steering column and you can reach it from there about the missing pin on the drive shaft it fits in fine you see a little bit of wear over there but it's okay it's not a huge problem I'm gonna fit uh, uh, some shrink wrap over it that should fix it that should always keep the pin in even if it does come undone from the drive shaft at some point the drive shaft will give out but I'll see about it then another issue another time the motor is a 3400 kV uh, hobby wing 4 pole it's a five, basically a 540 can but it's slightly too long because it's 65 millimeters instead of 50 so it won't be legal but I don't run competitions the speed control is a hobby wing uh, waterproof SC8 which you can program with a program card it comes as a bundle you can get it online I got mine off eBay but you can get them uh, at your local hobby store as well tie wrap the wiring onto the sh top of sh chassis plate just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere don't like wires flopping around the motor itself is okay actually it's pretty good but there's a problem and I think you can see it right about now yes wonderful camera it only focuses if you see something pink like my hand excellent the screws are almost in the entire left position it really can't go any further this is a 48 dot pitch gear uh, the default which you get with the ready to run is module 0.6 that sounds like great fun but it isn't why isn't the dot 6 good fun because the dot 6 gear you get with this vehicle isn't round so even with the brushed motor I had I stripped that gear in the first battery pack hurrah 
that's all just great. It doesn't seem to be very well built to take on brushless power either because the screws of the rear, hello focus please, the screws on the rear drive assembly, you can see the Loctite still, they came undone as well. So I had resorted to Loctiting them both. If you ever do need to remove the slipper clutch, make sure you get and loosen the inner screw not the outer one. The outer one is connected to the actual bevel gear from the gear differential and if you uh, loosen that one up and if you ever want to slide it back in you need to take off the bottom plate of the diff to push the bevel gear back so you actually have the length of shaft to tighten the grub screw. That sounds like great design. I think they should have went with just the basic single shaft through the entire slip clutch deal than what they've attempted here. So what this basically means is you have a very 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 short shaft here and you have a somewhat longer shaft here but it's not the same. Great. So basically you have a slipper clutch for the front and the rear separately. Not really. Because it's still connected. But it does mean you have this this thing here is basically an extension clamp for a really short piece of the rear axle. Now you can see the state of the gear differential, the spur gear, see some damage here. The reason it's damaged now is not because it's 40 ADP, it's because the grub screws came loose, then it starts wobbling. Um, no, not good. Um, the fact that we actually got a rock in there because we didn't run with the rock guard on that didn't help either but it's fine either way the problem is this gear is a 72 a spur gear is 72 pins and that ladies and gentlemen uh, that's some nice damage on my hold on hold stay hold cut that is damage on the motor that damage is from the grub screw of the central drive shaft and of the pin of the central drive shaft. And why the heck does that happen? The reason that happens is because you get a 72 spur gear here. You need to mount a really small pinion for the right gear ratio. This is a 16, a 16 to a 72. The small gear ratio means you need to move the motor in the entire left all position. And the entire left position means that it's actually rubbing against the central drive shaft. That's no fun. You can also see, very, it's a bit hard to see, yes, thank you. You can now actually look through the hole here. This was actually a piece of the chassis. But because the motor needs to move in so much, I had to remove part of the chassis. That doesn't strike me as a very good design. They also have a 77 tooth spur gear. Um, so m get that as an upgrade as soon as you can. So you get a larger spur gear. You can run a, small, uh, a somewhat larger pinion as well. That means you can move the motor a little bit out and you have the clearance. Great. That's basically what you want. And as a ready to run, you need to make sure you lock tight like so. This is a zap, but it's same thing like all the others. It's basically blue lock tight. And focus please, yes, thread locker it says. But the phone doesn't agree with me today. The reason I wasn't running with the rock guard, this is a, a, a separate LiPo alarm. You just put the balancer cord, you connect it to the balancer cord of your LiPo. I'm running just 2S for now. Um, I'll probably break it well before I ever move to 3S. It's a really small rock guard. I believe they added this as a standard on all the newer models. Uh, I got mine with this when I got this um, and it should 
fit over here. Yeah, it really doesn't want to fit over there because the drive shaft is a little bit too long. And I have a solution for that. Back in the old days, that's 20 years ago, we had the brushed motors, they got hot, so they made accessories in the form of these aluminium cooling plates. And I'm hoping this smallish cooling plate will give me the two extra millimeters to move the drive shaft in, which should make it hopefully clear for the rock guard. The rock guard doesn't keep sand out, but it should be enough to keep the rocks out, which get stuck between the motor mount and the slipper clutch. So yeah, I'm not very fond of this design. Uh, adjusting the motor and the teeth toothing, if you will, uh, to get it to mesh properly, that's a disaster, because if the rear clip is on, you need to have something long, and the way I do it is by extending a very thin screwdriver with a hex bit, so I can go through the rear suspension, and I can only just reach the, mo the motor screws. It's not terribly convenient, and because they're entirely in mounted to the left, because otherwise the gears doesn't mesh at all, they're basically in a heap of trouble. Uh, maintainability, if you want to take the central drive shaft out, the easiest thing I found is removing the front two screws, and then bending the, the front somewhat out so you can move the drive shaft out. So far, not really like what I'm seeing. I didn't break any A arms, uh, didn't break any shocks. So that's okay, I suppose. But to be fair, I've only run uh, two batteries, uh, two as lipo packs down yet. So I don't, I don't think it's really a fair comparison, if you will. Hoping to get some more runtime with this. Um, but I need a new 77 teeth spur because so far uh, the first one destroyed on the first run and the second 4080p gear uh, I basically broke that on the second battery pack. I replaced the drive shaft already. My gut feeling says this is gonna be a huge sinkhole. Um, a spur gear because it's integrated with a slipper is slipper clutch is 15 euros. The drive shaft because the pin came undone and that's gone somewhere down in the field means you need another drive shaft for another 15 euros that's already 30 euros down the drain that's not really what I wanted yeah more later